The People's Republic of China is the world's second largest economy, the world's largest manufacturer, and increasingly a major player in international news. But visual politic fans, despite this, it is still a very aloof and largely unknown country whose image continues to be surrounded by great cliches and myths, which either never were or, at best, no longer are a reality. At least not entirely. What we're going to look at are the three big myths that surround the Chinese economy. The three big lies or half-truths that you've surely heard many times and that you've probably believed. So let's get cracking. Myth 1. Just one large export factory. China has changed a lot in recent decades. Since Deng Xiaoping began its opening up process in 1978, China has experienced the biggest economic takeoff in history. Over the past 40 years, this country has averaged annual economic growth of nearly 10% and its inflation adjusted GDP per capita has increased more than 24 fold, enabling more than 800 million people. That's more than the entire populations of Latin America, Canada and the Netherlands combined to leave poverty behind. And yes, it is true. In this entire evolution, the export sector did play a key role, but with 1.4 billion consumers and a middle class that includes more than 600 million Chinese, the economy of this country goes far beyond that. Perhaps the biggest myth about China's rapid modernization and economic development is that its growth has been export-led. However, China's economic transformation owes much more to its successful adoption of a market-based domestic economy and its vast mobilization of savings for investment. Stephen Dover, head of the Franklin Templeton Institute. In fact, as Stephen Dover himself points out, the weight of exports in China is barely 19% of GDP, a proportion similar to that of countries such as Brazil or India, but much lower than that of countries such as Canada, France, Italy or the UK. And it does not even come close to Germany. The weight of exports over GDP in Germany exceeds that of China by more than 25 points. Yes, in absolute terms, China is the world's largest exporter. Almost 10% of all goods exported worldwide come from this country. But this is because we are also talking about the economy of a huge country. China does export a lot, but the real economic heart of the country lies in its local market, specifically in its investment market, in its productive factors market, or what is known as its gross capital formation. To give you an idea, China saves and invests locally more than 40% of its GDP, approximately double the usual ratio in Western countries. Machines, cranes, apartments, dams, roads, investment in housing, transportation, infrastructure and production centres have been responsible for most of the country's economic growth. In fact, the main economic problems now facing China have to do precisely with this feature. We are talking above all about problems of overinvestment, misallocation of capital and low levels of productivity. Precisely for this reason, for years, the Chinese government has been trying to boost local consumption so that its economic structure evolves towards a more model similar to that of wealthier countries. In other words, if we talk about the prospects and evolution of the Chinese economy, the key is not so much in exports as in its capital markets and productive factors. Myth 2. Foreign investors are fleeing China. Okay, that the Chinese economy is not living its finest hour is an open secret. The trade war, the pandemic, Xi Jinping's common prosperity campaign, skyrocketing energy prices, the real estate crisis, and the COVID zero policy are all events that are hitting the Chinese economy. However, despite this, it cannot be said that foreign investors are leaving en masse or that the government itself is restricting foreign investment. It is one thing to freeze an investment project or move it to another country in order to seek greater diversification of production chains, but quite another to retrace the path followed in recent decades. And keep one thing in mind, today there is no alternative to China. In fact, pay close attention to what happened in 2020. 25th of January 2021, China moves towards world leadership, overtakes the US for the first time as the main destination for foreign direct investment. And then in 2021, it once again recorded the largest FDI, foreign direct investment, inflow in its entire history. One out of every five dollars of direct investment worldwide went to this Asian giant. What's more, the Chinese government not only does not reject foreign investment, but they are very clear that they need it. Proof of this is that in recent years, Beijing has been opening more and more sectors of its economy to foreigners and has also made it easier for international companies to have 100% controlled subsidiaries in the country. For example, as we've told you here on Visual Politic, in 2021, the Chinese government authorized US investment banks to operate in the country with wholly owned subsidiaries. It is true, however, that the COVID zero policy is dealing a severe blow to this openness, not least because it is closing the country's borders to human capital. Capital. However, it is understood that this can only be temporary. That, at least, is the expectation. Myth 3. China rivals the United States economically. The third and last great myth has to do with China's economic power and its ability to look the United States in the eye. The World Bank estimates that the Chinese economy, adjusted for the price differential, is already above that of the United States. However, that can lead to a 
huge misunderstanding. You see, China has advanced leaps and bounds, but its distance from the richest countries is still galactic. In fact, we are talking about a country that still cannot be considered wealthy. According to World Bank data, its GDP per capita is just over $10,000, which is a quarter of the GDP per capita of the European Union and barely 20% of that of the United States. And let's not forget that this is what determines its purchasing power and international investment. The Chinese economy is very large because we are talking about the most populated country on the planet. Approximately one out of every five inhabitants of the earth are Chinese. But of the 1.4 billion people that we find in the People's Republic of China, only 600 million could be considered middle class. In addition, GDP is a crude indicator that presents many problems. It does not measure productivity, consumption of productive factors, or surplus production, which is ultimately what determines wealth. This is what explains why, according to Credit Suisse data, the wealth gap between US families and Chinese families has widened by $12 trillion since 2011. We also have to take into account that we are talking about a very large country with many differences not only in terms of population, but also in terms of territory. Unlike the large coast cities and inland areas are still relatively poor. In short, China cannot be considered a wealthy country, nor does it seem that, at least for now, it can match the economic clout of the United States. So there you have it. These are the big myths about the Chinese economy that are repeated again and again in many media outlets. And in many passing conversations. So from now on, keep an eye on them. But having come this far, it's now over to you. Do you think China will recover from its most recent economic problems? Have you ever considered selling or investing in the Asian giant? Leave us your comments below. And now, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to like it and subscribe to all of us here at Visual Politic. Many thanks also to our friends at Value School for their collaboration in making this video. All the best, and I'll see you next time.